Hey folks, I'm Troy and you're watching Troy Tube. We're going to continue our series on WordPress today and we're going to do some basic formatting and editing of posts and pages. Now, when I say we're going to do some formatting of posts and pages, we're going to uh, create some content for your site. Uh, we're going to you know, probably copy paste some things in, but we're going to upload some images and uh, show you how to insert those and how to do some formatting on your pages. Now, remember, we installed the classic editor plugin, which takes us back to the older version of the editor that WordPress had built in. The newer version uses the block system, which I personally do not like. I guess some people might like it, but everyone I know, I think, that uses WordPress uh, uses this classic editor. It gives you a choice of using a visual editor, which is kind of like Microsoft Word or, or a word processing system, or you can go to the text mode and edit the code as HTML, more like HTML. And um, it makes it a little bit easier to control some things, gives you some flexibility. Uh, WordPress does, it, you know, it's not a perfect system. No system is perfect, but with a little bit of work, it will do everything I need it to do generally. And, you know, like I said before in the, in the first video of this series, the system that works for you and does what you need it to do is the best one. So uh, in this case, we're working with WordPress. I'm gonna show you some of that and we'll upload, like I said, we'll put some content in it, content in the system, cre upload some pictures and create some pages and posts, give you an idea of how all that works. So I'll switch over to the computer and we'll get started. We're gonna go ahead and get started by logging into the admin control panel of my WordPress site. And as you can see, I'm already logged in. Remember, you go to your uh, website forward slash admin and it will take you to the login and redirect you uh, to this control panel once you are successfully logged in and we're going to take a look at pages and posts today now essentially the editing happens the same way on both so we're going to work within pages and we're going to go to our home page and click the edit button again since I'm using the classic editor uh, this is the uh, layout with basic controls and over here on the right, I can see that I have a visual editor as well as a text editor. So if I wanted to edit in plain text and use my own uh, HTML controls, I can do that. Or I can simply edit and type in the WordPress editor. So we're going to take uh, a little bit of text that I typed up here and we'll copy paste it in to the page. And generally, this is a YCWIG editor. What you see is what you get. That's the acronym. So when I bold things or underline things, it's going to show up. And then, uh, for example, I can take this. I can make it into a hyperlink. And I can paste in the link that goes directly to my YouTube channel uh, and directly to the playlist. And when I update this page, if I go to my front end of the website again I'm holding control and clicking visit site so it opens a new tab and you'll see that the new text is already there and it has the hyperlink and if I were to click on that it will take me directly to the video playlist on my YouTube channel now if I go back to the editor uh, if I do anything such as bold or underline text again it will show up immediately when I click the update button and go back to the front end of the website and refresh and with our text, we can take uh, you know the, the settings for the formatting and do different things. Typically, you do not want to have more than one H1 tag on a page. So we may choose to make one line the H1 uh, subtopic headings we may make as H2 tags. And then the rest may be par uh, paragraph formatted text. So you can use these uh, settings to get diff different effects. Of course, bold and italicize, uh, left, center, and right justify. And uh, you can use back quotes. Uh, again, you can insert and edit hyperlinks. Uh, you can insert a read more tag. Uh, or you could click this and get even more controls. So strike through text, horizontal line. So if you wanted a separator line between your uh, different sections of your page which is nice visually sometimes especially if you have a longer web page to divide it up into sections uh, you can paste as text clear formatting I can insert special characters I can increase or decrease indentation so if I wanted to move this line over uh, or I can undo or redo uh, the text in the formatting as well 
And then over here in the text mode, now if I were to go look at this, you'll see that it has inserted uh, the different tags for the formatting and created the padding for the indentations, inserted the H1 tag. Here is the anchor tag for the uh, hyperlink that I inserted. So when you're working in the visual editor, all of these things are happening behind the scenes. And if you go to the text editor, you can edit those manually as well. And even insert some of your own custom HTML code that maybe you don't have access to in the uh, WordPress editor itself. We can also insert media. So if I go back to the visual, uh, I decide I want to insert a picture here. I can go to this add media and WordPress has basically an, a media library so anything you upload is going to be uh, held within this media library to be used on your website such as images and graphics uh, within your site. Now uh, different plugins may do different things with the media library as well so there are certain uh, plugins to do things like create photo libraries or video libraries and they will create galleries uh, you know so some of this may change depending on what plugin you're working with and when you install some of those more advanced plugins like that I really recommend that you take the time to understand how they work and what you're going to do with them and we'll get into this uh, media library here in a moment because we're going to create a post and format it and show you how that shows up on the blog as well so we'll update this we'll go back to the front end of our website and refresh and you see the new formatting now you notice that the font here is different than it shows on this page and that's because the styling uh, controls the font selection and everything in, the, in this theme and if I were to change the theme uh, it would likely change the layout of the font, uh, the font type because the different themes will be formatted with different embedded fonts and so forth. Now if I were to go to the post section and create a blog post I'm going to click add new and as you'll see it's very similar to uh, the uh, page editor. Now we do have a few more things over on the right such as categories and tags which make your posts a little bit more searchable. And I'm going to create this page post and I'm going to use a, a blog post that I wrote on my other website earlier and so I'm just going to grab a copy of the text and put it in here. I'm going to create a new category and now when I create this post it's going to be in this category. Now I can also save a draft of this page and it will not be publicly viewable until I actually publish the page on the front end of the website. Another thing we're, we have on the um, uh, page is the set featured image page uh, feature uh, that is also available on the pages and some of the other places throughout the website and depending on what you're doing with it. So I'm going to grab a image and drag and drop it in there and we'll click uh, set featured image and then for a tag these are just words that you're typing in so these are kind of like keywords uh, that you might uh, use to search and find things and so I can add more than one tag here and then I'm going to drop a photo in to this article right here uh, on this page. So I'm going to grab this other image and drag and drop it right into my library. I'm going to say insert post. Now this photo is a little larger than I want it to be so I'm going to click edit and I'm going to say display it as a thumbnail and it, that's going to set it at the 150 by 150 uh, resolution. Now what I really want to do is I'm going to hit edit and I'm going to change it up here and click scale and that's going to change the actual size and resolution of the photo as it's stored on my website. Now it's kind of important that you do this if you are going to uh, insert photos in your site and the reason is for its page uh, optimization uh, search engines like to see actual photo and image sizes rather than scaled down versions uh, in other words this image is now really a 150 by 150 or thereabouts it's actually uh, if I click edit original and go back and look at it it's 150 by 176 where it was something like 250 by 300 or something like that and if I were to just set it as thumbnail it's going to display 
uh, without editing the original, if I just click edit or, or show it as a thumbnail, it's going to display at that resolution, but the real image size is actually going to be larger. So the page is going to take, a, a you know, it's, in this case it's going to be milliseconds difference, but it's going to take just a little bit longer uh, to load than it would if it was the actual size. It, there, in other words, I want it to display 150 pixels by 150 pixels. There is no reason for it to be any larger than that. So now I'm going to select uh, this align right and it's going to uh, put the photo over here. I could put it in the middle, it would insert it there, or put it here and it will move my text up and kind of do a nice wrap around like an, a newspaper article would do. So I'm going to click Save Draft, and I'm going to click on Preview, and it's going to take me to that post as I would be seeing it. It is in, it is in preview mode. This is not publicly available on my website. So if I come over here and refresh and go to my blog, it is not viewable at this time. So you will not see that on there until you publish it. So we'll go back to this post. I think everything looks great. It's ready to go. And then I'm going to click Publish. If I go back to the front end of my website and hit refresh, you'll see now you see the featured image. Uh, it shows a summary of the article. If you'll remember in the settings, in the general settings, I had uh, in that first video set the uh, blog post to show only summary and it will link to the actual article. So when I click and come over here, you see the whole article. Now sometimes, depending on the theme, you, all, you may also see that featured image above uh, the article or maybe down at the bottom just depending on the theme but this particular theme uh, chooses to show the featured image as the uh, kind of the headline vi uh, visual grabber for the uh, post I guess you could say and then when you click on it you're going to just get the con the title and the content of the post so hopefully this uh, video has been helpful to you in editing and getting you started with uploading media creating some content, creating your pages and inserting uh, photos and adjusting the resolution and size of those photos. Once we get into some of the more advanced topics later on about uh, CSS or uh, cascading style sheets, I'll show you how to look at the images and determine if they are actual size or not and uh, how to optimize uh, those pictures and, and the way you should be looking at some of the picture qualities uh, for the images that you put on your site as well. Hopefully that's been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below uh, the video.